start the recording here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a fun Reddit talk event. This one is very informal. We don't even have any special guests on. We are just going to enjoy our Friday evening. For those of you who are making it in here from Europe, uh, congrats for being up so late. I know it's getting late there. It started around midnight for most of you. So thank you. Uh, but we are just talking about DAOs. For those who are unfamiliar, DAOs um, is just a distributed autonomous organization. They can be used for a variety of purposes. And I just wanted to have a fun session, invite some people on stage to just chat about what would be some of the best things for DAOs to purchase. So, of course, we're just coming up with things that are primarily funny. Come up with whatever you think would, would get a laugh out of the audience here. And then, of course, extra bonus points if it's both funny and also something that you could see happening. So, I have one person that's raising their hand right now. It's Ash uh, Shawin. Um, I'm going to invite you up to the stage and speak. Um, so, uh, just to quickly introduce myself, I am one of the Reddit moderators here on our cryptocurrency. I'm Justin. You may have seen me on Trivia. You may have seen me on the State of the Moonion. The Moonion is coming up soon. Um, it looks like no one else wants to join me on stage. So, quickly, now's your chance to uh, request to join stage so that way you can. Uh, and, you know, impose your knowledge on everybody here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think most people are excited for Moon Week. That's, of course, coming up. We have some great events coming up also next week. So keep an eye on the calendar, uh, which is in the lower right-hand corner of uh, the new Reddit desktop. A lot of people waving. Hello, everybody. Hello. It asks to be a speaker, and I'll invite you on stage, and we can talk about some of the, the best things that uh, DAOs might be able to purchase. Of course, this is straight on the heels of a DAO successfully purchasing the largest tungsten cube in the entire world. So, of course, that's pretty funny. And then we also have uh, an, or had an attempt for the Constitution DAO to purchase a copy of the U.S. Constitution. Sadly, that did not go through. That, of course, would have been funny. Uh, they stopped bidding at you know tens of millions of dollars. So clearly. The cryptocurrency space is quite good at raising money for fun jokes. Uh, but welcome on stage, Orbital Glass. How are you doing today? I am doing well. I am just trying to find my headset so I can listen to you a little bit easier. Well, thank you for joining me on uh, on your your Friday. Uh, also, welcome to the stage is John Schenner. Welcome, John Schen uh, Schneer. Sorry, John Schneer. Yeah, that's that's a play on Jon Snow. Okay, okay, welcome. Totally not Jon Snow. Uh, you won't be, be able to convince me otherwise here. Uh, but what what brings you on stage, you two? What uh, what uh, interest do you have in DAOs? What do you think would be a fun thing for DAOs to purchase going into twenty twenty two? Well, I actually just kind of uh, was launched into kind of everything uh, i actually bought an ethereum name service name way back and they actually launched a token that created a DAO, and that's like the first DAO i ever kind of was a part of and i'm just actually learning about all this i'm a glass artist i'm trying to figure out how to utilize this in my own kind of art and how to sell my art in new ways and uh it's incredible and i heard something about reddit doing you know making something maybe the karma a token or something but i am way behind maybe you guys can educate me a little oh do you uh do you have moons that's the community points token for the cryptocurrency subreddit uh you know i i haven't participated much in the cryptocurrency subreddit just because i've been um you know working on other stuff but uh no i i am not sure if i have moons but i am definitely going to be participating a whole lot and hopefully getting some moons and yeah, that uh, I'm just I, I have no idea how it's structured on Reddit. And honestly, I'll look into it. I'm sure you guys have it all laid out, but it's very exciting just being, you know, involved in the cryptocurrency. And um, with that dropping the token, essentially, it gave me kind of the ability to do some more things that I want to do because it was actually kind of worth some money and I'm able to learn how to vote in DAOs. And it's just a constant learning experience. Very excited. Well, thank you for joining us on stage, especially if you uh, haven't been spending too much time in the cryptocurrency subreddit. We hope you stick around and 
and add the sort of content to the subreddit that you want to see. And that, of course, goes for everybody here. <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, sometimes the subreddit content isn't exactly what I want. Well, you can all add this content you like and make it make it good, too. Um, but yeah, some quick background on community points. The intent of this isn't to talk about community points for the whole time, of course. Uh, but Reddit has introduced community points to three subreddits, including the cryptocurrency subreddit. It's taken off the most in the cryptocurrency subreddit uh, of all three. And yeah, people have a token that they can use to tip other users. They can use for votes. They can use for all sorts of different things. And uh, they're currently on testnet, so there's still a lot of work to do. They can be reset, you know, <laughs> all sorts of things can happen. But it is, I guess, an example of a DAO where people have a token that they can use to vote on how to govern the subreddit and all sorts of different things, uh, including the distribution of the moons. So definitely, in a sense, community points are DAOs. So I think that's, uh, that's uh, definitely one use that I think everybody here will hope will con you know, continue on in the future. Uh, so thank you for introducing that. Uh, John Snare, John Snow, <laughs> do you have any comments on what you hope DAOs will do going into 2022? No, no, I didn't really have any hopes for anything. I was more so joining up here to ask where you would suggest is the best place to get a thorough understanding of DAOs. I'm, I'm familiar with DAOs myself, but I know a lot of people that are into crypto are not overly familiar with it. For instance, I've, I've known about Pleaser DAO purchasing the Wu-Tang album for quite some time and, and things like that. But where, where would you suggest is the best place for people to get a thorough understanding of exactly what a DAO is? Oof. Uh, that's, that's a really good question. If someone else has a good explanation for that too, make sure you raise your hand and I'll invite you on stage. You can give your a chance at, uh, answering that too. Um, I'm going to take a risk and invite someone who has one karma to speak. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, they're the, the problem with DAOs is they, they really are a very, very different in different senses. I mean, you have some DAOs that are very straightforward. You have a token that is issued perhaps for free even, and, or, or for some participation and people can vote with them. Uh, they have different sorts of DAOs where you, you get them based off uh, your providing of liquidity. <laughs> you know, you get different DAOs like ENS where your participation in the community um, will get you, get you a DAO, but honestly, or get you a token in the DAO. Uh, but honestly, just like cryptocurrencies can be issued in, you know, really infinite sorts of different combinations. Uh, the same can be said for DAO, right? These are tokens. They can be issued all sorts of different ways, and they have different sorts of utilities. They can all vote on different things. So it's may, maybe it's easy. Well, it, it's really hard for me to point people to a, a specific example. So I, I apologize for sort of dodging the question. I, I'm we're here to talk about that, uh, but uh, it's 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 really important. I think that people sort of keep an open mind for how they approach the situation. And maybe to some extent you can think about them as uh, like try to understand moons first, and that'll give you an understanding of what type of DAO works. We have a, a really built out moon wiki, for example. So once you understand how the cryptocurrency subreddit moon community points are set up, that's probably a good starting point. And of course, I'd love to hear other perspectives on what starting points you all had for getting more into this space, because there, there's just such a great variety um, here. Uh, welcome, Safe Moon Diamond Hands for Character Leave One One Seven Four, and Far Cabinet Two O Six Five. Welcome to the stage. Thank you, thank you. Um, I just kind of joined in the middle here, so I don't really know what's going on, but I'm interested to see what you guys are talking about, and happy to add anything that I could. Do you want to have a? Do you want to add something to how uh, you learned about DAOs? What sort of resources do you think would be good for people to to refer to? So I apologize, it's going to sound like an ignorant question, but what do you mean by DAO? Uh, so uh, sort of like the Reddit in. community, are you familiar with the cryptocurrency subreddit uh, community yeah, points have, program yeah. with the moons? Yeah. So moons are an example of a DAO where by participating okay. in the community, you get a token, you can use a token to vote, you can use a token to do all sorts of different things. So that's an example of a DAO. Um, gotcha. Of course, you have quite a few others out there. So would you say that learning about moons has helped you sort of understand how these decentralized communities can get together? I guess 
I guess in a way, yes, but I guess it I guess there's a downside to it as well. Because I guess if you're obviously I guess people would be interested in getting these these DAOs for their perks, but I can see that kind of influencing the community in a bad way. And if I can speak honest here, I'm not trying to start any problems or anything, but yeah, I do I do hold safe money and I do hold other coins. But I noticed that in the cryptocurrency sub, I don't know why, but people I mean, I don't take it personal because it's just a coin, so I'm not really offended or anything. But I've noticed that a lot of people kind of talk bad about it, and I see that there's this incentive. I don't know, maybe it's these DAOs, but I see when people kind of talk talk about something, they kind of get DAOs. Does that apply, or am I just thinking that, guys? I mean, absolutely, people are going to have different views on it. I know there are some people that are very outspoken. Uh, they believe moons have been a, a net negative to the subreddit. There are definitely yeah. are some people that feel that. <laughs> um, so you you do get quite a few different uh, opinions that they come in, and, and we certainly want to want to hear all of them. Um, I want to also introduce uh, Sorry to Ruin. Uh, welcome to the stage, Sorry to Ruin. Maybe they're a bit shy. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Make sure you speak up. Um, otherwise, if you could do everyone a favor and move to the audience, uh, but by all means, uh, definitely speak up if there's anything you want to contribute to. Um, yeah, we were just talking about DAOs. Again, just to reset the room a little bit, we are on the heels of DAOs. These are just groups of people that come together. They may raise funds um, and they have purchased uh, the largest tungsten cube. In, in one case, they've also purchased or they attempted to purchase a copy of the U.S. Constitution. So DAOs can be used for managing all sorts of different <laughs> assets that people throw at it, um, you know, come together. So I think it's 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 an interesting discussion that we should have today about what do you think in 2022 are some of the craziest things that you will see DAOs buying? Um, like, are they going to buy tolls? Are they going to buy? Uh, are they going to buy a bunch of NFTs? Are they going to? Uh, one 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 funny uh, thing I, I like to think of is you have uh, sadly in the cryptocurrency space a lot of uh, cryptocurrency related ransomware. So I'm just imagining someone just making like a ransomware DAO uh, for in that case worse, obviously. But <laughs> I think it's just funny to think about, of course. Um, so uh, what about you here for the content too? Uh, what do you think about DAOs? What do you think is going to be a trend going into 2022? I guess I have a question more than a comment. Uh, I'm curious what problems DAOs solve rather than what they can buy or not buy. Like what is an actual problem that we are facing that they can help us resolve? Thank you. Thank you here for the content too, for that, that question. And uh, I want to preface this by saying I'm definitely not the best expert to answer these questions. Um, the best people would probably be those who work for Coin Center or something who are uh, sort of lobbying on behalf of them on a, on a regular basis. Uh, but DAOs are an interesting way to help pool communities together and to quickly come to consensus on something that otherwise may have taken a lot of time to come to consensus for. So if you take for example, the cryptocurrency subreddit, the moderators, including myself, have helped voluntarily run the subreddit for many, many years. Now moons are introduced. And instead of simply just relying on people's ability to comment uh, and sort of voice their opinion for or against certain rules, instead we have this really cool voting mechanism whereby people who participate get these tokens and they can use these tokens to have a say in what uh, moon you know have a say in future distribution of these tokens and they also have a say in what sort of rules are implemented and how they're implemented on the cryptocurrency subreddit so that's one simple example where people sort of are given a say and it, it's it's able to reward work in the system. Um, others, uh, for example, someone else mentioned ENS. So ENS, the Ethereum name service, they recently uh, used a DAO and they're, sorry, or they recently started a DAO and they're using this DAO to reward people who have contributed to the ecosystem in the past. They are using it to reward future contributions and they are using it to vote on 
sort of prioritizing new features and things. So I don't think that it necessarily, like DAOs um, typically aren't the only way that you can address a lot of these problems. But the way I see it, at least, is it's a really quick way to come together, make a system based off the rails that are already distributed and available to anybody and easy for people to participate. And then you can use that infrastructure to easily organize communities and make decisions. Does that answer your question here for the content too? Yeah, that's helpful. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, welcome back to Orbital Glass. <laughs> Um, and I also want to remind everybody that if you, you know, we have plenty of stage space here. So if you do want to participate in this conversation, we're just supposed to be having fun today. This is not meant to be a formal Q&A or anything. I would honestly prefer to just sit back and listen to all of you talk and, and sort of hear what you all have to think. Let's get some banter on today. Um, so if you want to join the stage, raise your hand. I'll invite you on. And uh, I think, I, I think uh, you know, the intent of this is just to have fun and to all, all, allow you all to have a, a relaxing Friday. <laughs> so uh, Dot Shots, you raised your hand. I invited you up. Welcome. Uh, oh, maybe there's, it, there's a, oh, it's, I can't, it says quite a few people decline your invite, which doesn't make sense because they asked to be invited. So I don't know if it's a Reddit talk issue or what. Um, but you know, again, beta feature, fun testing stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to put it on. So here for the content too, uh, if you just had to come up with something crazy that you think, why would people come together to purchase this asset? What are some of the most outrageous ideas you can possibly think of uh, for people to come together and, and put some real movement behind purchasing? Uh, they can buy a Lambo and then they can turn, take turns driving it. <laughs> like a timeshare Lambo. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yep. Well, how about, how about we store that at my garage? I think, I think that's, I think that's a real solution. Don't you think? Uh, I guess if we can all vote, then the community can decide where to store it. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Uh, welcome to the stage, uh, Wild Measurement 233. Hey, how are you guys doing tonight? I uh, think we're doing well. That's great. Yeah. No, no, I was just thinking like maybe having some kind of organization or, or a good backing for maybe some form of a charity thing, you know, that everybody could be stoked about a token, uh, you know, because the basis behind it is something for something good. You know what I mean? That might be a good push and then lead into maybe like a secondary token or something like that, that is actually, you know, not for charity, but just an initial idea just to get some marketing and generation behind it. You know what I mean? Of, of uh, just exposure. So I just, I haven't really seen that yet as far as looking across these different platforms and anything that's going on. So it's just, just a thought. No, I think that's a good idea. We've actually seen that, uh, I believe there was a Tung, I don't think it was the Tungsten DAO I was talking about, but there was one DAO that donated a lot of money to Coin Center, for example. And Coin Center isn't like a 501c3 charity, it's like a C4 or C6, but you know, similar idea where people use part of the proceeds of the trades in order to fund what they, you know, what they feel is a good cause. Right, right. And I was just, you know, because I feel like you can almost base an entire side project off of a platform like that. So it just might be an interesting avenue to go down. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It's almost like uh, people who donate the most or who contribute the most to a nonprofit could receive, I could partner, and the nonprofit could partner with uh, some cryptocurrency project, and uh, the donors, the contributors to this nonprofit could be rewarded with participation in this other cryptocurrency project. I, I think there's a right. lot of space for for people to figure out how to make that work right i i would agree because you could try to keep them in a fraternity kind of thing as far as just like ens did when they just did that airdrop for everybody who purchased a dot eth domain you know a little while ago i mean you had no clue that you were about to receive that because they came out so suddenly that they announced it and you already had to have that dot eth i believe it was like october 28th they took the snapshot so like 
I had been all over the other domain, like for Unstoppable and everything that, not even thinking about grabbing .eth because I'm, you know, I really like Moon River and a lot of the other um, platforms. Not that Ethereum isn't, you know, kind of the basis for a lot of these things. Um, it, it just would be interesting to maybe have, you know, start building the different projects off of it, and then later down the line, you know, you can, just like you were saying, you can have the the charity team up with the project. They can, you know, have some kind of auctions and stuff like that and and just start you know not only is it free exposure because the charity is going to push this uh you can just create the entire world like it could be its own universe uh you know for a project you know going forth with something like that and you're doing good you know it just seems like kind of a win-win yeah thanks thanks for that uh welcome to the stage kai the wolf 11. hello um, I just wanted to ask. I I read this news article, something about a uh, DAO was trying to buy like a piece of a constitution, and I just wanted to see if you guys heard about that and what you guys were thoughts about that. Anyone else want to take this one? Yeah, they they got outbid by Ken Griffin from Citadel. I see. Okay, thank you. John, do you remember how much they raised? How many millions did they raise? Oh, I, I didn't actually see how much how much millions they raised, but I know that Ken paid somewhere forty three million plus for it. I'm looking up how much they specifically raised. I think it was about forty million dollars uh, for the Constitution DAO, and like you said, they're outbid. Uh, but I can. Confirm that number. Yeah, they raised about forty million dollars in one week, <laughs> which is insane. Yeah, forty-three point two million was the final bid from from Mo Kenny. Yeah, so if you can buy a copy of the U.S. Constitution, what's next? Um, I wish that John Cincinnati was on here. Uh, John Cincinnati is someone I've known for a while in the cryptocurrency space, and he puts out tweets that are just hilarious. One of them was a DAO whose purpose was to steal one of the remaining copies of the Magna Carta, for example. And so it's just I, I just thought that was a hilarious joke to come across, and I wanted to share with you all. Um, and that, that's part of the reason why I think it's a really funny uh, conversation topic for today is what are the, some of those outrageous things that people will make DAOs for the you know purpose of doing? <laughs> I, I would say if it were going outlandish, something like the Statue of Liberty or the Eiffel Tower. But if you want to want something a little more practical, just start snatching up islands. <laughs> snatching up islands? That's actually an interesting idea. If you wanted to buy like a, a small Caribbean or Canadian island. Can you actually do that? Like, that's an actual thing you could like legit do if a group got together. They could just legit buy an island. I agree. That sounds like regular ec economics, but built with the same platforms that we use today. Yeah, I think the hard part in practice is going to be uh, getting those documents signed off. Anything that requires uh, like a lot of notarized documents from the purchaser and stuff, that's going to be what's hardest. <laughs> because uh, they're used to dealing with specific registered corporations or they're used to dealing with people who have a specific ID number or something. So if you're trying to talk to this, just this void, so to speak, it can be a lot more difficult. Uh, welcome to the stage, Wall Street Bet God. <laughs> welcome. Hey, have you guys heard of City Dow? No, what's City Dow? So, uh... <clears throat> It's uh, they're trying to build the first uh, real estate market on a Dow in Wyoming, and they're gonna like, um, they're basically selling like citizenship NFTs for a thousand dollars, and then you can like go buy plots of land. And uh, they were talking about like getting enough money together to buy Kanye's ranch. Because yeah. of course, yeah. <laughs> See, uh, it's it's kind of funny how there's always just some sort of meme or joke attached to a lot of these. I don't know if it's a requirement to get the attention of people. Like, you couldn't just say you're buying a plot of land. You got to say we're buying Kanye's ranch. 
Do you think that that's going to continue in the next year? Just the idea that everything will be tied to a joke? I don't think it's practical to have a bunch of random people living in one place. I don't think that'd go over well at all. <laughs> but they are they are still going to sell like plots of land. Um, that was just like a side plan, but... All right, make sure you react pro or con, upvote or downvote as to whether or not you'd buy tokens in a DAO whose purpose was to buy plots of land in Wyoming. Let, let me know if that's something that is something you would all be interested in doing or not. I'm getting some, let's just say, mixed reactions so far among the crowd. <laughs> Seems like some people are, are a little bit skeptical. I decided not to buy a, license, or a citizenship NFT because it's too soon to tell. Well, you say citizenship NFT. What about a country somewhere legit using one of these tokens as sort of its uh, citizenship by investment starting point where you get like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know why they would necessarily need an extra voting component. So I don't, I clearly haven't worked this idea out, but uh, does someone want to try and take a stab for how a country would potentially try to, to use this for actual citizenship by investment? They're actually planning on uh, tokenizing your IDs and all forms of verification in the future. Um, so basically, you would um, like if you ever bought a plane ticket to fly on the plane, like you would um, you would like choose to share your your ID with the gate agent who would check and like be able to prove that you have your ticket, that you have your passport. So you would like basically never have to carry any identification on you. That's not really a DAO, though, so much as it is just no. like a, a private a signature of yeah. a private key, right? It's more like a tokenization use case, but not really a DAO. But that's the only thing I've heard about um, for, like, citizenship. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I'm trying to think how I could make this spur-of-the-moment idea work, and nothing's coming to mind yet. It just means... They'll have to, someone else will have to think about it and then inevitably try to run with it, given it's a cryptocurrency space and people can kind of attempt to do anything. That's part of the fun part. <laughs> I saw someone joking about the idea of doing a DAO to purchase an apartment. And if you held at least X number of tokens or, or something or X value, you could come to visit them in the apartment or something. Obviously, I thought that was hilarious. Uh, I don't think that's going to take off in, in massive scale, but... We've seen things in the past where someone has uh, tokenized on Ethereum, sort of like their future earnings, and people have bought like an individual's, like a token for the individual. So we've seen crazier things, I guess. <laughs> um, I yeah, I so uh, I don't know. A, is there a sports gambling DAO? Ooh, explain that further. What do you what do you mean? I mean, I mean. A sport, How do you like a, working? Like a sports betting DAO. And um, so basically betting with cryptocurrency is illegal every in every state in the United States except Wyoming. And Wyoming is also the only state where you can uh, make a DAO LLC. So um, that sounded like kind of a good use case to like build. I mean, you could build one out there and like then you wouldn't be able to stop anyone in the world from using it. Also, I just want to quickly remind everyone, this is obviously not financial or legal advice, but that'd be <laughs> interesting to think of because people in other states can invest, they can form a Wyoming company, right? You don't have to live in Wyoming to have a no, Wyoming company. You, you don't know. need to live in Wyoming to be invested in, you know, Wyoming real estate or Wyoming uh, assets like a company. So I would sort of be interested to see how that, <laughs> that would all play out in practice. It's always funny when we ever have like the, the tax discussions on here, we, we had one tax one in the past and people were, uh, it was basically just listening to, you know, pretend Redditor trust experts, you know, just, <laughs> just listening to people with no credentials, just talking about these like very, very complex trusts that you know, normally speak with an army of lawyers to actually set up, but it was just talked about in casual conversations. So I guess that is one of the funny things about being in a cryptocurrency space is it makes 
the collective knowledge just from some of these things that were typically very, very off <laughs> normal discussions into a room that, you know, is just talked by, you know, <laughs> all sorts of random people. So I guess that is kind of cool. Um, also, again, reminder, if you want to hop on stage here, just raise your hand. We'll, we'll bring you up. It's very casual today. This isn't a, a guest situation. We just want to hear what you think about DAOs. We want you to come up to the stage and come up with a really, really crazy DAO idea uh, for what you think would be would be a good way to, to keep the conversation rolling. Sports gambling is, is, is an interesting idea uh, just because, as you said, it's it, 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 there's a, a lot of jurisdictional arbitrage, as <laughs> often it's referred to as, um, in that sense. So how about a DAO that, um, like, how about, like, they would raise, like, a bunch of money and then buy, um, like, government bonds or, like, long-term assets and then redistribute, like, the yearly interest to the people who invested? What would be the main uh, purpose for making a DAO for that, do you think? Um, I just feel like if you could get more money, like, into the system, like, getting the money together, then, like... You could have a bigger influence, like maybe about the same as a super wealthy person. Um, <laughs> like if you could get, like, you just think about the GameStop thing and like how all, all those people got on board and like bought into the stock and manipulated it and made it go sky high. I mean, if you could get a ton of people like that in on some other stock, like, or crypto for that matter, like you could possibly like make a lot of money. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I, I I don't know if we have to see how it pull out. Uh, it's like uh, on my tweet level, wiping up people for or against an investment decision, and then someone just executes on that. I guess, I guess living in that world now. So uh, <laughs> maybe we should just build that into our assumptions that that people are going to do stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just throwing out ideas. <laughs> No, it's fun. I, I like to keep the ideas running but, here. Uh, welcome to the stage, Substantial Plan 747. Can you hear me? We can. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was, you know, so a lot of these tokenomics that we've got going on in bull, super cycle bull markets, and super cycle bear markets, I would think that there's a, a space, a place in the space where an investment that could perfectly track the true, true value uh, without, with minimal fluctuations, uh, where you're going to know exactly what you're going to get. Like, nothing ever gets over appreciated or super underappreciated. Um, if we could get a DAO that could just uh, track perfectly. I don't know anything about it, but I've always been frustrated that we can go, and, and it's great because we can make a lot of money when things get undervalued, and then you lose a lot of money when you're in something that's magnitudes and order way overvalued. So, you know, like, how how could a DAO solve this problem? That's that's my question. Or can it? That's a good question. I'm I can't think of an easy way where you track some sort of real value or some sort of index without. Uh, I mean, you could do this. You could do the uh, stablecoin route in a sense where, you know, you. If you want to track the price of a dollar, for example, you hold one real dollar somewhere, but uh, I don't know how you would really do it otherwise. I just invited a few other people. What if, Sorry. Uh, what if the DAO was set up to track under and over? Like, I feel like there's a space be like in the market to where 
you can, and it, it sucks because you got to be like, I'm betting. <laughs> I'm betting that this is way overvalued or this is way, like, how can we get, I don't know. It's just stupid. Uh, it's just, I guess, just the dollar. So, so forgive me if I'm wrong here, but isn't the intrinsic value of a DAO within the underlying token that comes in to distribute the, the DAO tokens? Well, you may not even have some assets to start, like in Cryptocurrency Moon's case, right? You didn't have, you don't have a pool of assets managed by moons, right? It's just moons, right? They just come out of thin air and they're generated, you know, every moon week. So uh, in some cases, yes, but not necessarily. Sometimes it's just a token people want to have because in Moon's case, it's effort that people need to exert to get it. And so that effort is desirable, perhaps. Right, right. But there there are a lot of DAOs where it is uh, like an underlying intrinsic value that comes in, correct? Absolutely. Like there, you know, if, there are some DAOs that are like, we're going to raise a million dollars and put it in this fund. And if the paper value is a million dollars, well, in theory, the value of all the tokens should be approximately $1 million, right? So definitely. I also want to welcome uh, under the stage Azo Kuhn and Brendan3005. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. I, uh, I'm really interested in this discussion here. It's like a down member myself, so I just wanted to check this out. Okay, awesome. Um, Ezra Kuhn, welcome. Maybe they're shy or something. Uh, Brent, Brennan, what, what DAO are you a part of? I'm on the, uh, the my DAO is called Cryptex Finance. So we have a token called um, TCAP. And I, it was interesting because I heard you guys talking about stables so what we have is like a synthetic stable in a way so it's like pegged to the price of the entire crypto market cap so it's in the way it's like an s p for like the entire crypto market cap do you use a uh an oracle for that and for, for people who are here basically you find some way to some semi-trusted way to look up the price from somewhere report back to a system and sort of use that in your calculations Yes, uh, spot on. We use uh, Chainlink for our oracles. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's um. How do you deal with the challenges where, uh, like, are you just invested in the broader market cap, or how do you sort of deal with the potential mismatch between assets on hand versus the uh, coming information from the oracle? Sure. So, like, that's kind of the cool thing. It's like it's completely uh, synthetic. So, so we have a custom oracle from Chainlink for the entire market cap. So. They're feeding their. They have uh, three different price feeds, so they have Coin Market Cap, uh, Coin Gecko, and Nomics, all giving them the the price feed. And then, yeah, TCAP is collateralized, so you can provide like Ether Dai to mint or borrow a TCAP. Um, and then, yeah, it follows that that Oracle price. Okay, so, so sorry for going down the tangent here for everyone else, but so the risk then in theory is that uh suppose there is a token let's just call it shiba inu coin that you perhaps didn't think to buy to begin with and then all of a sudden it just explodes in value and uh someone who's holding ethereum for example that's collateralized uh, or as a, uh, they, they provide like let's say a million dollars in ethereum to your platform for either a million or less of your token uh then you would uh, you know the value of the collateral might and have appreciated less than the value of the uh, of the total global market cap. Is that a rough way to think of it? Yeah, and there's like two sides to it, right? You can you can borrow, you can be a borrower and provide um, collateral to borrow TCAP, or you can just trade TCAP on the secondary market. So if you're just a speculator and you think that you know the entire crypto market cap will continue to appreciate, then you you know you can just get TCAP on a dex and then just hold it. Got it, got it. Do you have any um, voting mechanism to the tier DAO? Yeah, so that was interesting. I heard you guys talking about that too. So we have uh, our governance token CTX. And the interesting thing about that as far as like um, like it being the underlying value, um, you know, the way that we've distributed our governance token was uh, we never have sold or will sell any. It's just you get them uh, as rewards for providing liquidity or staking. But yeah, uh, one CTX is like one vote on the Cryptex platform. It's fully decentralized. Okay, thanks for that background. Um, and then if you had to come up with a crazy trend in 2022 that 
that will inevitably happen. You know, if you're able to just snap your fingers and make this crazy Dow trend where they're buying all sorts of crazy stuff happen in 2022, what do you wish it would be? Uh, can you, sorry, can you elaborate more? What do you mean? No, like we've, we've seen Dow's uh, purchase the largest tungsten cubes in the world. We've seen Dow's attempt to buy a copy of the U.S. Constitution. What do you think would be the most hilarious things to happen in 2022 with Dow's? Oh, crypto cities, man. Buy a town or something. We just had someone uh, on stage talking about the, uh, the Wyoming one. Yeah, I think I think that's definitely in the future. I think like the Constitution thing is kind of just like a... Uh, just a signal of where all this stuff is headed because really you know the cool thing about DAOs is when all these people put their minds together they can make a lot of crazy things happen so that's really an exciting thing about DAOs in general awesome yeah uh, welcome to the stage perfect chaos too hey there um yeah just talking about future trends have you heard about um the friends with benefits DAO? It's one that's uh, sort of backed by Chris Dixon, who's obviously a, a smart man. And it's basically just like a, a group of like NFT artists. Um, and they pool their money and they sort of use the DAO to, uh, like it, it like it makes money as they sell their NFTs and their art. And obviously they can use the DAO to promote their art. But also, you have to hold a certain amount of tokens. You have to buy into the social network where you hold a certain amount of tokens, and that sort of gives you access to um, to like certain events. So it's just like a social network, but you, you have some skin in the game. I have not heard of that one, but I I, I think that that's an interesting conversation. Let's let's keep this safe for work. But I, I think that that's sort of an interesting idea to think about is sort of like a community <laughs> communities that are <laughs> around certain types of organizational events let's say i mean we've already seen the board eight board ape uh yacht club that's not exactly a, a dow in like the sense we're talking about here really but it's, it's an example of communities coming together and and using nfts as part of their identity so i i see no enormous difference between let's say buying an nft token versus buying like a token and that's that's more strictly meant for being part of a dao i mean in, in a sense it's still communities you could still set it up that one nft is one vote for x purpose for example so there's a lot of overlap i think there so i, I appreciate you bringing bringing that example to the table yeah i think uh i think friends with benefit is uh it's just a funny name it's not a it's not like a only only fans, although only fans DAO is probably uh, something that'll come as well someday. Yeah, exactly. That that's what I was sort of thinking along the lines of once you mentioned that. Um, welcome to the stage, Sangria Lala. And are oh they left? I was going to ask if they were drinking sangria right now because it sounds pretty good, but. Sadly, it looks like no. Welcome uh, to Vertikita 22 and ZZZZ1. Apologies if I mispronounce any of those. Big, big hello. I just wanted to say I'm from Serbia. I, I follow you for quite some time and I just wanted to say keep it up. That's it, man. <laughs> Okay, thanks. You stumbled into, uh, I guess, for you, a very late night conversation about DAOs. What do you think is a, a crazy trend that if you sort of, you know, deep down, you really hope that this happens in 2022, but even if it's absurd? Well, yeah. Uh, can I be honest with you? Uh, as long as it's safe for work, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about it like yesterday, <laughs> so so I don't know, man. A any a anything is possible, basically. Um, so I just I just think uh, we should all hop 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 on this train, yes, and just follow follow the game. I don't know, man. Okay, yeah, thanks. What about you, ZZ ZZ one? I don't know, man. They're they're shy. I don't know why. <laughs> I 
for a lot of Redditors, this is the first time they're probably joining a voice chat <laughs> on this platform. So I think they're definitely trying to help break the ice and, and like a the way Clubhouse did, I guess, for getting people uh, to, to participate. But uh, yeah, we have quite a few, we have over 100 people listening right now and only a few people on stage willing to give their crazy idea of what a DAO could be. And I think it's a, it's a great opportunity to just show up in the room, make a fool out of yourself, just saying a crazy idea and then just ducking out. I mean, it's a perfect opportunity to do that with the pseudonym. <laughs> so if you have an opportunity to make us all laugh, just jump on stage and, and, and state your idea. I think that'll be, that'll be fun. Hey, Justin, sorry, I was reading through the comments and I, apparently there's some people that don't know why they're getting invited up to speak. So I think either they're hitting the hand accidentally or they don't realize what it means, but that's probably why people are backing out and not saying anything. Got it, got it. Yeah, I see, I see a list of people that allegedly raise their hands and I click the invite. <laughs> so apologies if you're getting spammed uh, to, in, to jump on stage. The way I see it's, it's uh, it just appears as if you want to hop on stage. I'm not clicking on anyone's name in, in, uh, in that's just a listener and, and requesting, so to speak. Uh, but welcome on stage, Sad Anywhere 179. Hi, I just wanted to say uh, hello to my Serbian friend, and uh, he has a really nice name. Okay, this is kind of amazing now, so uh, I'm just going to leave. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Okay, you know, Reddit brings all sorts of communities together. Right? We're talking about the importance of DAO and bringing people together. And uh, boom, I guess here's an example of it. <laughs> true, true, um, true. What I, I must agree on, on that one. What other things have historically, you know, what, what other communities have really historically struggled to communicate and not just communicate, right? Because we have the internet. The internet exists. A lot of people have used the, the internet <laughs> to, to, to have conversations. They've used Reddit to create communities of all sorts of crazy subreddits. But what has historically lingered in the sense that they've really struggled to actually come to consensus on something where a DAO would potentially help with that or to allow them to, you know, we, we've given the example of people potentially raising money in a, in a more trusted way, perhaps, and also much less trusted way where someone just runs away with money. So be careful. But um, it, it seems so far that it's really helped people raise money for a purpose. Uh, it's dictated in a smart contract somehow, or they get to vote in a sense that's dictated in a smart contract somewhere. So what other communities do you think would really benefit from from that infrastructure that currently sort of falter because they don't have uh, as much as good tooling as perhaps now DAOs may offer. I think uh, I think video games are definitely a good use case, especially video games with like that we've seen with really large communities because a lot of times there can be discrepancies in the bigger games. Bro, shut the fuck up, ship to the moon, motherfucker. Hey, like hey. Okay, okay, well, you goodbye then. Average, good. average shit bag holder. Yeah, good, good, goodbye them. Sorry, everybody. But you were saying, Brendan, you're saying uh, gaming. Yeah, just like there, I think there's a lot of discrepancies between you know the devs' decisions and like what the community wants. That can happen on a lot of games. So maybe adding like a democratic process for for how a game moves forward that's also transparent about how the community feels could be a cool tool see that's an interesting one because you you know if you're a developer and you're working on behalf of this gamer group let's say this gamer dao um you presumably would kind of have to be paid somehow so the dao would have to also have some resources so do you think like the idea is you have communities that come together, say, hey, we want a new version of this game, or hey, we want uh, like this new game built from scratch. So let's all pull some money together in a sort of Kickstarter-like fashion and then distribute to whoever bids to develop it. Is that a, a you know, reasonable high-level picture? Do you think they would follow a different process in, in practice? Yeah, there's, there's like two ways you could do it, right? You could just watch the game from like a centralized standpoint and then eventually decentralize it or you could have like a you could coincide your game with like a governance token 
and then the governance token could get distributed based on how much you play the game. So like someone that plays the game a lot will have a bigger input as far as voting goes. And then if you had like a treasury um, where you put the like the proceeds of the game because you're talking about like paying people, then you could have, you know, the main devs could uh, give themselves a salary based on the community treasury if the community approved it. And then also you could pay out contributors like that. Yeah, I would love to see an example, especially if there's a starved community for a while, um, just based off what I know from gaming, which is very limited. Uh, but I know there has been, or there had been for many, many years, a cult community around Age of Empires 2, for example. And that resulted in a company starting up whose whole purpose was just to continue developing this decades old game. And then they ended up working for Microsoft to make future versions, like official versions of Age of Empires 2. So, and, you know, future versions of Age of Empires. So I think that's a sort of example where you have a, 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 a strong example. community demand that sort of, like if it was able to spur this, this type of involvement without a DAO, it probably would be a lower threshold if you were able to use DAO infrastructure. I, I definitely agree with that, especially with that game. Okay. What, what other games have do you think have cult communities that uh, you know sort of have been left on the sidelines, or you perhaps have people that are very aggressive at wanting to pursue some future development or some future things? Maybe like Trackmania or something. I'm, I'm trying to think of some other <laughs> other communities out there. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting one. I feel like um, I feel like a lot of like battle royale games, like Call of Duty Warzone, are like big use cases for this because it's like when it's like or any type of competitive game right like maybe even overwatch 2 where people are always like arguing over what changes are made to the game because if any game has a competitive standpoint then people are always going to be upset about what changes the devs make yeah that's a good point i appreciate you raising that um welcome to the stage uh majid uh 100 000 and congo I must say you are very good at uh, reading the names. <laughs> I, I I don't think I am. I just try. So sorry, Majid, one thousand, uh, a hundred thousand. Sorry, uh, you were about to say something. Yeah, I'm from the UK, so I probably sound a little different. But I just wanted to say I'm I'm all for any kind of decentralized um, community. I think the less governance we have from central authority, the better. Okay, yeah, thanks for jumping on stage and sharing that thought. Uh, Congo, do you want to give me comments on, on DAOs? Yeah, um, I don't know too much about them, but I would be interested in seeing how DAOs could be integrated into current company infra or like infrastructure, like huge corporations like Amazon or UPS. And like they always preach about how we're family, we're family, but then integrating a DAO to provide a voice or even like direct like communication from a lot of the employees to I guess the central part of the organization or like a step forward decentralizing large companies. Is that is that even possible? Is that is that really stupid idea? I just figured I would like to know if like what are y'all's thoughts on that? Oh that's an interesting one because it's not just efficiency that comes into play there. It's sort of what does the corporation management want to do? <laughs> um, sadly, historically, it's in the U.S. They ha there hasn't been much attention in giving workers sort of further, <laughs> further ability to to act or, or you know influence the company's behalf. So I'd be I'd be curious. Yeah, uh, but I mean, there are also quite a few startups, and there have been a lot of like vocal CEOs on like LinkedIn or Twitter who talk about uh, more like like rights or even benefits for employees. So I would like to see if they would be willing to take the next step and incorporate like a partial DAO or incorporate some sort of DAO that works in junction with the centralized, the traditional centralized structure of a company. And I, I mean, you mentioned that it's going to be hard and probably it will not work, but I don't know. I feel, I feel like it could be possible with like the way, I guess, at least tech companies and tech startups are moving to kind of, redefine what is a work atmosphere and what is kind of the company culture. So. Yeah, I think that's a very interesting idea. I appreciate you 
sharing it here. It would be interesting to see if a company runs with that. My other question would be, to what extent would this decentralized DAO on the side benefit or primarily benefit or provide some advantage over using an existing corporate structure, given that this is a group of people that are all known, right? They're all employees of the company. The company knows who they are. Uh, they're, they might even be in the same building <laughs> together all, all at once. So they have uh, sort of the lowest challenges at organizing because they are, to some extent are already organizing. Um, but I, I do find that, you know, I, I do think that's kind of interesting. Maybe, you know, I know that, uh, Unions, for example, will still sometimes struggle to organize. So I wonder if there's like a, a Dow union might might be the right line of thinking there. Yeah, that actually sounds like a great idea. If anything, I'd like to anonymous, anonymously, anonymously vote to go to a different bar for the after work hangouts and, and not get like ridiculed for it, you know? So that would be a great starting point. <laughs> that's actually hilarious. I, I love you. I, I appreciate you sharing that idea. That's hilarious. Um, but yeah, thanks for sharing that. I think, are there any other comments that people have on that? Otherwise, I'll invite people on stage, but jump in and just uh, give your comments on, uh, you know, some sort of corporate uh, organization DAO or even just a, a worker empowerment DAO. I would be all for a DAO union, but I think maybe we might have to step into the metaverse before that's possible. In the union history in the UK, if anything to go by, the, the right wing Tory Conservative government have done everything to basically stop that power from um, building. So possibly a DAO that functions in a metaverse could work because you could collectively unionize without corporate structures interfering. Hi, hi. And uh, I guess. I guess DAOs, are, uh, I guess uh, unions are, are often fairly expensive, like a couple of hundred bucks a year. DAOs might uh, might be an easy way to cut down on admin. Like uh, just do like a Discord organization and you don't have to count votes and all that stuff. It can just sort of be uh, autonomous, which a DAO is. Uh, well, well Lawrence, what did you, uh, what did you want to say? Hi, hello. I just wanted to mention, I was trying to think before a use for the DAO that sort of differentiates. And one of the key things I think that we all agree is sort of the, it's on the blockchain and it can be certified. So it's almost in one way as a vote, aside from all the financial advantages that a company could incorporate. But then I think uh, Congo kind of touched on the same uh, question that I jumped on that I wanted to ask. It, it still doesn't answer the question whether a company, a private company such as Facebook, uh, Twitch, or, you know, for example, lately in the news, Twitch has been a lot with all these people sort of doing stuff or whatever. Um, we could implement, they could implement, but that is if they want to as a company, because they are a private company, to give us the power to vote. Um, because any vote we'll do can, can be justified through the blockchain, so it cannot be faked, just like the recent YouTube stuff with likes that people having an issue. YouTube could give us a vote because it is a people's platform, but ultimately it is Google's to vote whether we like it or not, instead of having all this, let's say the news that's currently happening. However, I'm not sure if we still have a right for them to implement it. Uh, at the end of the day, it's just our vote that counts, which is, I guess, you know, certified by the blockchain, which is a, a good question to put, you know, will it be used? Because there's one thing in games, People can use it, but then the game has to be from the start decentralized, which is something hard in itself. And if they decide to use that, they have to obey it without being able to retract that ability from the users after, after, because it might hit them. So it can get very complicated, but it's also very interesting. So to kind of to tie onto that, yeah, I totally agree that who really gets the right to vote? Uh, people get to vote, but in the end, who gets to implement it since it's a centralized company. But if, for starters, um, being able to record the votes and the data in a decentralized and validated manner, I feel like is a huge start. Like you had mentioned, there's a lot of buzz on the media about when it comes to YouTube and who's really the one who wanted this idea implemented or not. There's a bit of nuance with that. So just figuring out who, like, where the majority of opinions lie and being able to validate that data in a um, 
kind of trusted manners. It's a huge starting point. What about you, Shleem, uh, 77? First of all, welcome to the stage. And uh, did you have any comments on that or did you want to send us into a new topic here? Um, hello, uh, this is my first time uh, joining a live edit. I'm actually from the Netherlands here and I was just reading up on the DAOs or the DAOs as you call it. Um, I, I actually got interested when you were talking about the, the games, Trackmania and uh, Age of Empire, I believe. Uh, I, I wanted to add uh, the tokens from Rocket League, if anyone has played that one. I believe it has like a lot of following. Uh, and probably over two, or two, two to three million users. So yeah, that may be like a good entry point for DAOs to, to outshine, or, like for the, the technology of blockchain to, to come out as it is, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, that's all. I appreciate you sharing that. What do you think of the general idea? And then, so I'll ask you first, and then oh, anyone else can answer. Um, so what do you think about the idea that, you know, there are quite a few startups in the space now that are working on specifically, like, decentralized DAO-type game projects. Do you think that it's, like, a, a sensible strategy, if you're trying to make a, a startup in this, in this space, uh, to try and build your own community around this, you know, a sort of decentralized vision? Or do you think it's probably a better strategy to focus on where existing gaming communities are, figure out what they want, and then try to tailor your product to, to the specific community? I think in my opinion, we should try both uh, routes because games like Rocket League and uh, the other ones, the other big ones, they're already big. They're like, they already have a lot of control over what they make and how they implement their code and everything. So if we get more power to as to how the game should be, then I don't think um, the, uh, or the the level of the game or the or the, the creativity behind the game might stay. So, but this shouldn't be like a, a step, like a wall between your thoughts or like your creativity to, to come up with new ideas for this, I think. That's all. Does anyone else here have any thoughts on that? Um, I think I think Rocket League is definitely a good good example. When I was trying to think of examples of games, I'd have to agree with that. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, welcome to the stage, uh, Big Pope Eight Three One. Uh, activated my mic took a while uh, i was just thinking on um the previous dow project that was uh following with the u.s constitution which was uh it's the constitution declaration and, and it's pretty cool i was thinking about something perhaps like ironic like a community project that can either be ironic that can eventually gain some traction but uh as far as i can think of is as a wild idea is maybe launch something into space, uh, something that could uh, all rally everyone up. Uh, but something that can definitely grab like the masses' attentions, whether it be ironic or uh, Ocean I guess in a sense, like a joke in a sense, but it could definitely do something around those lines. Uh, as for the Wyoming thing with the land, <laughs> that's something that was new to me, but uh, that's also a, a start, but I don't think it would gain as much traction as it should, but it's just an idea out there. Like a massive baby Trump floating in space, that could work. <laughs> that or, I don't know, live stream, uh, something up there into space that only several like million can actually see, a uh, million to billion. Uh, yeah, float as well. I mean, that's something funny as well, but there's already space to be up there. So who knows, I might get taken down before it even gets up there. I do have a question to ask. It might be very stupid, so I do apologize. But would it be able, what would it be able technically to live in a world that we use our currency through a decentralized, through a, through a DAO? So issues like 
let's say inflation, which are obviously very, as much as complicated as they are, depending on multi-factors, assuming this is in the long in, in the long future, as everything will eventually go digital, we will eventually, I guess, drop anything that's paper. Um, will it be possible to control things like inflation, um, you know, and stuff like this? I don't know if, you know, house bubbles and all this stuff, there has to be some kind of calculations with all the charts are they getting project projections. Is there a way for us to take that power and because we already taken, I guess, monetarily slowly, slowly, but add that vote inside from the decentralized uh, through the blockchain and a DAO and be able to control it from the people. So uh, that's one. This is the, the complicated part that might be stupid to control things like, for example, inflation, as they say, you know, it could go up to like 15 percent. Would it be OK for us to vote on how we would like to tackle that, assuming that everything is on smart contracts? that control, you know, inflation rates on whatever banks or anything like this. Does that make sense? I mean, personally, it, it kind of does. I would be skeptical, I guess, of someone's ability to be able to vote and sort of things like that. And, but I, I, I see where you're coming from. Um, and that's, I guess, the whole point of the conversation here is to throw crazy ideas out. So I appreciate you sharing. I kind of like the idea, like, we can just make a DAO that, have, like, tracks a basket of, like, useful items like Big Mac, price of gas, rent, and it just combines all those, and it's like, an, it's like a stable coin, but not, because it, it, as the dollar falls and it takes more dollars, you're tracking the price of Big Mac. <laughs> Correct, because you would know what's coming inside. You would know the income through the blockchain. You would know the outcome. Theory, you would know all of it. So you'd be able to kind of adjust little, let's say, buttons if you want the glass to be cheaper or if you want you know, electricity to be cheaper and vice versa, depending on the situation. Someone's getting a phone call or something. <laughs> Welcome, uh, Brilliant Ad31785 to the Saint. Hey, thanks guys. Um, I really like this whole conversation. It's fascinating. I had to quickly go and learn what uh, DAOs were, uh, but it occurred to me that this would be amazing in the legal field um, because where we have precedent and statutes and ever-changing laws uh, going through various different systems, right? Uh, criminal and civil, if there was an autonomous community and system that was going out and just publishing and then putting it out there, we would all kind of be on the same page in real time. I just feel that that's, uh, you know, it's not money and it's not the economy, uh, but it just seems like a very practical uh, use of, uh, of a DAO if, if you could get, you know, state bars uh, involved and other attorneys to join in. But I guess that's kind of the whole point, right? By the way, that was my phone. I apologize if you heard it. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So I'll probably just go on a few more minutes here. I'm going to invite other people who raise their hands, or again, allegedly you, raise their you hands. You should be getting into politics, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome, Mr. Debro Forty Four body <laughs> and uh that will be said I assume so this is uh, something funny uh about my name I mean I mean I don't know I mean it sounded like it was something funny is there anything you want to uh, leave uh, any of you want to mention about what you think would be a funny trend for dogs in 2022 or what I guess on a more practical note is we mostly been focused on what do you think is going to be an interesting direction for DAOs in 2022? Well, um, DAOs. What, what's a DAO? 
to be honest, I, can I say just you know, something? Just like thirty seconds. I think we are way too too early in all of this, don't you think, um, Samsung? I, yeah. I think I, I think yeah I, I think we should be seeing this in 10 years 20 years and somebody mentioned voting I'm like wait what I mean it's not the fucking democracy you know so I don't know man it's 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 usually complicated to people but uh, has a very practical use but I think it's it's really the future but not in five or ten years <laughs> maybe even more you know just, just my hell? input Sorry, real quick, uh, that it, what appears as that what she said. Uh, what, what did you want to add? Uh, my thought was kind of more in regards to the what several other people said in regards to the legal aspects. But if you think about it now, like take, for instance, the city that you live in, a lot of the money is distributed in the way that they see fit. So in a Dow situation, where a collective amount of people come together and let's say purchase properties in real estate, you kind of control, you know, the aspect of what businesses come to your city, what you attract, and not more, you know, facing the regulations of the taxes are so high and no one wants businesses to come to your cities. So in that aspect, like a DAO would be pretty awesome because it kind of gives leverage back to us to a degree rather than it just solely being a, a government oversight mm. if everything was legal yes <laughs> yeah yes yes of course but i mean to be go ahead go ahead well talking about the gaming aspect um that's a more simpler thing you know as somebody said you uh, know like this would definitely be a, a long term yeah i was gonna say i think people want to hear us talk about nfts yeah. yeah well i mean that's what the audience is saying you know yeah, yeah. Chat. either way DAOs are interesting nfts gaming all of it to just have a collective group of people come together and be able to actually like you know make big changes to any aspect it, it's something that's exciting and uh true very true to see but that's all i got I think you, have no, man, you said more than a lot of people here. <laughs> yeah, I I was actually curious on uh, since a community hypothetical will run its own city, we wouldn't really need a government in a sense, as in like elected officials hypothetically, right? That's the set case, or well, I think with the way that whole system goes, there will always be somebody that has to oversee it, but the leverage aspect would kind of be more, they follow money, they follow the funding. So if you take that aspect and kind of make it more collective than it being singular and solely on what, you know, one group does in a small party of 12, where you've got, you know, a party of what could be endless people, you know, you kind of dictate in a more fair aspect of what could be done. But that's like somebody else said too far down the road, but in reality, it couldn't be. It all just depends on the minds coming together and actually implementing something like that. I mean, of course, but the good thing we're shooting the can right now this early. Someone said it's too early. I mean, someone just put 46, $43 million on, uh, on a document. So. That's, yeah, that's that, yeah. I I didn't have words to say it. Like, yes, you're totally right, right. But uh, like, I don't have enough words to describe. I mean, we're getting into the digital world. I mean, it's almost inevitable to see those, you know, progressing and becoming oh. like everyday thing. Yes. Yeah, that forty-two, forty-eight million, right? Yeah, I mean, one thing's yeah. for it's sure. Kind of I mean, crazy. The, yeah, one thing's for sure. I mean, 2022, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say 48 mil for the crypto world. I mean, that's pretty much nothing. It's like a drop in the ocean. So, oh, yeah. It's I, the beginning. It, yeah. You guys shouldn't get too hyped about 48 mil being chucked at a document. 
No, it's okay, but uh, let's we speak normally, so I want to hear the big talk. I don't know. I mean, I'm not the chief master here, <laughs> but uh, you yeah, wanted to say something. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Continue because I see you. You did your research, right? And you have you have some visions on that. While everybody else is just like, oh, maybe this, maybe that. But that's I, what I, it's all about. Yeah, I definitely like to think and dabble. I mean, as for uh, what Samsung said, what does it hold 2022, whether if it's a crazy trend or not? I mean, for sure is this. NFTs are here to stay for a good while. DAO yeah, is something new. It's going to definitely expand. But yeah. the projects yeah. that it's expanding right now, documents-wise, we're talking about Wyoming. We're talking about hypothetically running a town or a city. It's if we're doing it, if 134 people are, or 33 are, are doing it, just imagine what could happen in a couple of months, weeks. This will get to the, I guess, in the media itself. People are barely learning about what crypto is, but it's been going on for so long. Longer than... It's, it's in a lot of the people. Of course. Yeah, I... Sorry, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to... What about just something easy like... Well, not easy, but... But like... Uh, lobbying a DAO for lobbying uh, for better crypto taxes, like this fucking bullshit where you trade Ethereum for Bitcoin and that's a trade. You're still in risk. I, I'm going to, I'm going to quickly gonna jump, in here. jump in here. Uh, yeah, that definitely is may, maybe a super PAC, but there are a bunch of regulations in terms of what money actually directly goes to candidates. So you can't just have money pop out of, your Monero boating accident, let's say, and just magically appear somewhere else. That's you're not allowed to do that. So uh, there definitely are some legal limitations. You're going to run into something like that. But when it comes to super PACs, then maybe. So there's potentially room. Um, so, uh, sorry, Shleem seventy seven. What did you want to say? Yeah, I wanted to add, um, or I just wanted to go back to the the whole election and the one uh, decentralized government uh, type of uh, implementation. Uh, one thing that I want to add was, don't you think that it's going to be a big problem if even with Twitter today, we have a big, like a massive issue of misinformation. And if the whole thing is based on just opinions of community, then right now we're about 130 people and barely more than half of us know, have like a proper knowledge of crypto as a whole. Um, and most of us are still learning about DAOs. So don't you think that that's going to be like a big problem uh, after all? Or maybe I'm just not thinking right or something. I think the issue and in information with crypto in general comes to discussions like this. I mean, I'm, I'm off, you know, two days a week. And pretty much on those two days, I'm on Reddit pages. I'm on Twitter pages. And the one thing I've started to see over the past week is conversations like this pop up about several different topics in regards to crypto and if we can come together and you know continually do th things like this that's how information is going to spread and uh you know one gr one conversation i was listening to they talked about how crypto is kind of tribal and you know you've got all these different coins you know shilling and mooning and lamboing and all these different things it, but we're all part of the same same space. So if we could just get on the same page and even kind of just remotely promote like a group and not just one particular, you know, aspect of something, it could change something in a major way. Uh, the article I was reading was actually uh, Mark Cuban had made some comments about Dow, and I know, you know, people kind of take what he says with a grain of salt, and then some people, you know, take it to heart. But he was talking about uh, Dow's even kind of taking on company assets, and pretty much the company solely being in control of the Dow, and uh, that's kind of what fueled my thought in regards to real estate and even governing so it, it's you, you have a great mind my friend you have a great mind uh, i try i could talk about crypto all day yeah i, I just wanted to uh, if i can of course uh, uh, interrupt you to say um 
what you just described is pure future. And I think, as I've said already, I think it's inev inevitable. I think that's going to happen. You know, the company assets and all, all of the stuff you're receiving, saying, but um, because my English is so bad, I cannot um, fully talk about it. But um, I don't know, what is your favorite, maybe? Crypto-wise? Uh, mm, yeah, yeah, crypto. Uh, I, uh, well, crypto wise, yes. Let's say, let's say crypto wise. Uh, again, I'm not promoting, but I really like the Fag ecosystem and the token as itself. Um, I don't feel like the price reflects the technology at the moment, but just the ecosystem and the platform that they have, and even the staking and wrapping and the bridging i mean it's it's pretty in depth and uh i think i my honest thought about feg is when regulation starts to hit and people have all of these you know large quantities of tokens they're going to find some kind of platform that's more friendly to staking and rewarding rather than just cashing everything out um, cause if crypto is going to replace Fiat or if Fiat, you know, constantly has the inflammation, inf inflation aspect to it, I mean, crypto is going to become more stable and people are going to look for those stable aspects to continue to grow their crypto and continue. Exactly. To grow exactly. exactly. That's what they wanted to say. Nice. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> I, I'm going to I'm gonna interrupt here just because I want to wrap this up pretty soon. I want to move us to one topic. Again, thank you. That what you said. Thank you, everyone who's contributed conversation so far. Uh, it's really good that we have an interesting conversation just with the first one of these that we're doing very informally. So hopefully we'll have the ability to do a bunch more of these in the future where we can dive into all sorts of different topics. But I want to steer the conversation back to one that is specific to the cryptocurrency subreddit. We obviously have a DAO that is something that Reddit initiated. It's something that Reddit is very much testing with its community points program. We have the luxury of being really, I mean, we're tied for the second subreddit to have this implemented for us to, to sort of test out and find out what kinks and, and to make some improvements. And clearly we've had a few votes. So clearly people had some recommended changes that they wanted to make. So as Reddit pursues its community points program, is this something that you all are quite optimistic about for other subreddits? Do you think that it will, I mean, of course, we're going to have some pros and some cons, but I, I would say overall, would you say that you're more optimistic or pessimistic? And I guess um, we can even go one by one. So substantial, uh, what do you, are you optimistic or pessimistic about Reddit expanding Reddit its community expanding points program? program? Yeah, anytime you can get value, um, off of something that you're just using anyway is, is and it appreciates down the you know over time is a good is a good deal for everyone in society everyone okay i appreciate that what about you perfect chaos too um yeah i think it'll be great if it was uh the whole reddit that had uh had community points and uh, i think it would also be like a, a big DAO like that, I think could do maybe pretty cool things in the in the real world, because there might be some real money and some really talented people that could be uh, the sort of direct projects into the real world. Could be cool. Okay, thank you. What about you, Big Pope Eight Three One? Oh, what was that again? I, I apologize. I was uh, taking out some groceries. Sorry. Oh, we're, we're, I, I moved the conversation to the last one on community points. As Reddit builds out its community points program to other subreddits, do you think that, like, are you generally optimistic about this or pessimistic about Reddit pursuing the community points program in other communities and, of course, growing it here, too? When it comes to Reddit, I'm pretty optimistic. I mean, we pretty much promote the... Uh, I was going to say something. Uh, they pretty much promote the, the heck out of it when it comes to things that we want as in for other communities itself will probably thrive depending on the community itself whether it's more vibrant or not i mean hypothetically like the crypto community cryptocurrency i think it would be more vibrant there especially when there's a lot more people that are participating willing to give 
certain uh, tokens to actually promote their comments and whatnot. So I'm pretty good. Okay, thank you for that. What about you, Brendan3005? Yeah, I'm definitely optimistic about it. I think it's a great idea. <clears throat> One thing I would love to see is like um, being able to stake and then like delegate uh, those tokens to more influential people in the community that can kind of like act as a voice for multiple people, which I'm, you know, I'm sure they're thinking about. I think that would be a great step too. Interesting. I don't think uh, that conversation has happened too much. So uh, I'll actually, I'll, I'll give a plug at the end, but we actually have a separate moon subreddit now. So I'll, I'll plug that in a second, but let me get through the rest of these uh, Very cool. opinions. So uh, uh, Tavarta kid at 22, again, I'm sorry for, mis I assume mispronouncing that. Yeah, you said it pretty good. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's pretty late here, but uh, I just wanted to say, we, if, if we in the future implement 50% of the real world and 50% of this, what are we talking about now, digital, I think that's a compromise everyone is able to to accept. Yes, I think that's what it was. Okay, thank you. What about you, Shleem77? Um, I don't think I'm I'm optimistic about it, but I'm not sure if uh, it's gonna be uh, helpful to all the subreddits, or because some of them are nationalistic, or some of them, it it really depends on what type of subreddit that your type of like trying to focus on. So oh it, yeah, it's it's sorry, I'm optimistic. So which um, if you can quickly say which ones are you generally more optimistic about, or which types are you generally less pessimistic or or more pessimistic about? Uh, the same for Schleem 77. Um, well, nothing is coming to my mind right now. Um, okay, uh, no worries. Sorry to put you on the spot. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Majid, Majid 100,000? Yeah, I would just echo all the thoughts already. I'm, I'm not going to add too much on this point. But yeah, I'm generally positive. But I think Schleem's making a good point that some subreddits are kind of toxic. Um, well, it would be interesting to see how that would play out. Thank you. What about uh, that? What she that, that's what she said. It, it's something to be optimistic about, but it's all going to determine on the people in the community. Uh, it could be good and bad. Yeah, I think that's a good point. If you have a kind of in cohesive community, they may remain in cohesive. <laughs> Sad anywhere one seven nine. What about you? They've been pretty quiet. Recently. I, I need to wake him up. He's he's Serbian. <laughs> I, th I think I think it it really. Uh, hey, yo, unless I'm, we implement I'm, I'm... it ourselves, we we're, we're not gonna know what's gonna happen. So, the only way to find out is to do it. Then, that's. That's it, I guess. And by that, yeah. we can get start up with communities and or neighborhoods or maybe a city or, or a small town. So, Why not? I'm just I listening would like, you would like in the background. Question. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, okay. Sorry, man. Sorry, my friend. Sorry. I'm mute. I'm mute. Yeah, I was okay. just uh, listening to you in the background. My bad. Uh, all right. Um, well, I appreciate everyone for joining today. I'm going to wrap this up. Like I said, I, I especially appreciate that most of you are pretty cool with me kind of calling you out so to speak at the end there with, with pointed question with you specifically uh, but uh, i just want to quickly say that we now have a new subreddit specifically for cryptocurrency moon discussion to help further prevent it from completely dominating the cryptocurrency discussion we've obviously had some measures in place so far uh but this will help further so if you want to specifically talk about cryptocurrency moons in a much less restricted fashion just like most other projects have their own separate subreddit for all sorts of different things and even though there was nothing specifically preventing someone from making their own subreddit or other form to discuss we do have a new sub cryptocurrency moons that's what it's called so if you want to talk about moons specifically you can talk about it there and of course cryptocurrency meta remains a very good subreddit it's a very useful tool for you to talk about anything rule changes propose or what to have votes on all those sorts of things we have those processes laid out in the cryptocurrency meta subreddit. The most active users on the cryptocurrency subreddit will 
or I mean, we, we are typically in the, the cryptocurrency meta subreddit. So push everybody there um, so that you can make sure that your voice is heard sort of before we even get to the votes <laughs> um, and make sure that we're having important conversations uh, also within the community. So I want to thank everyone who joined me today for this for the moment thing. I appreciate all the opinions that people raise. I hope you all learned something and also had a lot of fun and we should host these in the future. So thank you, everybody. Take care. Have a great weekend. Yeah. Good night. All the best. All the best. See you. Bye. Hey, Samson, can I...